the Dr. Ed Show. I'm Dr. Edmund Sulkowski. You know, on this show, we're about health and wellness. We do not diagnose, nor do we treat, but we hope to educate and inform to empower you to be in charge of your own health and wellness. That's what we're about. You can s listen to me every Saturday morning live on AM 1250, The Answer, 92.5 FM, and it's on YouTube. It's on, uh, what else are we on here? Uh, Rumble.com, uh, iTunes, all these places. And uh, we have a, a show that pretty much is like this show, but on the radio. And our goal is just to educate and inform you so that you can research and learn to apply these techniques, these health techniques, to your own lifestyle. And that's what we're doing here today. And I, I want to welcome also the city of Altoona, who's now broadcasting Dr. Ed's show. Uh, awesome. So we're, we're excited about that. So we have with us, this is like a powerhouse of knowledge over here. <laughs> These three people here, Dr. Joe Pereca, Dr. Gary Fiber, and Dr. Paul Arciero, have so much knowledge and have been in the field of, of medical education for and treatment for probably a hundred years combined. It's, it's, it's amazing. And what we're going to talk about today is a lifestyle to basically change how your body functions on a cellular level. Is that what we're doing today, Paul? That is. Yeah, that it, captures it, it. And we talk about like metabolism. What is metabolism? Yeah, metabolism is the, the core of how our bodies survive. Um, metabolism is the energy, it's the breaking down, it's the synthesizing of literally every cell in the body. So that's life. That's life. So if, our, if we're not functioning properly on a cellular level, we're either having health problems or we're not living. We're, we're not alive. That's right. So how do we support this? Uh, first and foremost, through high quality nutrition. That wow. is the most important way. So you qualified that. <laughs> you said high quality. Where do we get high quality nutrition? Well, it's right here in front of us. <laughs> and we're going to talk about all of this. Is yeah. it not the food we eat? Um, it absolutely is, yeah. That's where it all begins. It's, it's how we nourish our body with the highest quality nutrients. Um, it includes things that we also might drink. Um, but that, that's how we influence and impact our metabolism at the highest level with the foods that we eat. That will determine if our me metabolism is operating optimally. So it all starts with the nutrition. So y you have a PhD in nutrition and... Um, Applied physiology and nutrition, yes. Yeah. So, so, so that's, that's, kind <coughs> of, that's kind of incredible because you're looking at how the body functions but how you support the body for that function to occur. That's right. And you have 38 years of research in developing this program. So what brought you to get into this field? It's not well, like you, you know, uh, you know, as you're growing <laughs> up, you want to be a fireman or a policeman yeah. or, 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 or Indian chief. How did you That's get right. into this? Yeah, all of the above. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I think as a, as a young person, you have um, visions of, of following along with the superpowers, you know, that we watch growing up watching. Um, mine was always, of course, Superman or Batman. Uh, but no, I was I was Batman an athlete. Was my favorite. Who was yours? Batman. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I knew we had something coming. <laughs> um, I, I I was not a good student as a, as a young boy. Um, in fact, I was asked to stay back in third grade. Couldn't spell my spell my name. So as as I started to go through life, not having self confidence um, intellectually, I turned to my physical body and I just became an athlete. Um, and for me, it started off very egocentric. It was all about how I could enhance and improve my performance. But then a transition happened, Dr. Ed. I had an epiphany because people started asking me what I was doing to stay healthy. And a lot of times they were older individuals. They were parents and um, teachers and things like that. So that was very empowering for well, me. Well, I think that's actually that group is really when you start to pay attention to your health. When you're it young is. and you feel vulnerable, and you really don't have issues, you don't think about it. That's right. Yeah. But as you get older and you start to see changes that you don't like and you start to appreciate what being healthy means. And uh, so that's interesting that 
that's yeah, it, 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 it totally turned my attention off of me as the focus point and I started to gather more inf of this information on how to achieve optimal health to serve other people. Awesome. Dr. Fiverr. Now, do Dr. Fiverr and I have had so many conversations over the years. Dr. Fiverr is a chiropractor. Now, he's retired now, but he's a consultant, so he's never left the field. And what was interesting to me is with all my medical training and all the medical people that I know, chiropractors were the original people that focused on nutrition. Why, why was that, Dr. Fiverr? Well, we were all about, and still are, most of us, about doing what we can do to allow the body to heal itself. And we focused a great deal on the nervous system because that's what actually runs the body is the nervous system. And it affects everything else. However, you can have a functioning nervous system and not do or put into the, the food, the fuel, or whatever you want to make things work like Dr. Paul was saying. And interestingly, as long as I've been in it, I actually, you said who influenced you. I think it was Moses because I was there. <laughs> but the thing was, the whole thing of food then growing up, when I was eating food, it was cooked by my mother and other people. It was clean. And grown in the backyard probably. Yeah, oh yeah, we had gardens, we had everything else. And once I got into practice, which started in 78, 1978, by the way, 1918, like I've been accused of, <laughs> the point is, I watched people get sicker and sicker and sicker. And the stuff they were eating and the, what was being put in the foods not just to preserve it, which is bad enough, but to addict people. When you put sugar in food that you don't need to, it's, there's an addicting property to that. And everything was packaged, and now everything is convenient. And we are the sickest country in the world of you know, advanced societies. We the wealthiest and the sickest. Wealthiest and the sickest, more money per capita on, they call it health care, I call it sick care. And when you drive that, we were really renegades back then. Now it's obviously a little bit more well known. So when you were being trained in school, did they actually sit down and, and have classes upon classes on nutrition? Yes, we actually, it was interesting because my medical colleague friends, um, and I had a number of them as friends and patients, had um, about a 50 hour course on dietetics, okay? And that was if it was the right colors of combination on the plate, it was supposed to be healthy. We spent a year in a nutritional program. Yeah, I'll laugh because I had that. That's my experience. I had, we had a nutritionist come in for five days. And we had an hour class every day for five days. And she was probably 200 pounds overweight if, and maybe more. And when she walked in and she walked in front of the auditorium and we just stared at her and started to laugh. And she said, don't do what I do, do what I say. <laughs> and so she never gained our respect uh, because you can't, you can't not walk the walk and just talk. That's basically, I think you're an example of walking the, walking the talk, right? I do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I try to do that. Sometimes it's hard, yeah. you know. But um, when, you're, when you look at what nutritional training is, we don't get it in school. I don't think Correct. there's one physician that gets it, you know. And they do the pyramid, and the pyramid is a joke. <laughs> and they revised the pyramid, I think, maybe four years ago. It's still screwed and it's up. it's a bigger joke, right. <laughs> you know. And it really is the manufacturers of processed food dictating what we eat according to how much they want to sell, make profit, right. you know. Dr. Joe Pereca, my personal chiropractor, I see him every Wednesday, I, I can't wait. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, been a big help. And you, you have that same training. I don't know if you guys went to the same school or not, different schools? No. Nope. No, I went to Palmer College in Davenport, Iowa. And where'd you go again? Northwestern, Northwestern in Minnesota. Minnesota, mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah, I, a lot of people when I live in Arizona come down for the winter from Minnesota. Smart, yeah, and um, that training though I think it, every chiropractor I've known mm -hmm. seems to have that nutritional background. And you guys were the first guys to start selling supplements inside your office. Yes, I mean that's a big part of our 
when, when we look at the, the chiropractic philosophy is you have to look at the body from uh, emotional standpoint, physical, and um, uh, chemical. So the, the chemical aspect, of course, is the nu nutrition. Uh, so we're looking at those three things. If you are healthy both emotionally, I mean all three aspects, emotional, chemical, physical, then you have holistic health. Um, but, I mean, we had started back even with the um, osteopaths. They were into nutrition, homeopathic and lots of nutrition. But in 1910, there was a thing called a Flexner Report. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, a Flexner Report is when uh, Carnegie's and the Rockefellers, uh, primarily now the Rockefellers, they got together and they had a gentleman go around to all the medical schools because the medical schools wanted to bring everything together and unify their education, but they didn't have the money. But Rockefeller did. So he, he said, of the world. yes, he said, I'll give you the money, I'll help you, but, you know, but we wanna, we'd like to sit on your board. So they put him on the board of education. Fox and, and the hen house. Yes, and what happened was, you know, they were all invested, the uh, Rockefellers and Carnegie's invested in oil. And so they uh, did away with the homeopathic medication, the homeopathic approach and uh, minerals and vitamins. They said, now, these things don't work, even though they did. <laughs> But they said, these things don't work. Uh, you're going to use these petroleum-based medications. And it changed the whole landscape, the whole um, approach to medicine, the way it was. We, the chiropractors, homeopaths, MDs, um, osteopaths, we all had similar approaches by, you know, using nutrition. Because, you know, let food be thy medicine, uh, let medicine be thy food. That's Hippocrates. That's way back when. Uh, well, it's interesting. Every medication on this planet mm -hmm. that's made by any pharmaceutical company is derived originally from some plant. Absolutely right. Nature's put the cure. Yes. That's it. Growing in the ground. Yes. And then they take it and they find a because you can't patent a natural product. Mm -hmm. So they take a product, find a chemical synthesis of it, and then they can patent it, mm -hmm. but you know, every medication is toxic. Yeah, I mean the... Including, I mean, aspirin's an example, that they take a willow bark tree, mm -hmm. they saw people eating the bark of this tree, having health improvement, mm -hmm. they synthesize something we call aspirin. Right. They but isolated. there are side effects to aspirin. Absolutely. Is that every medication on the market, you, there's a thing called a PDR, ph Physician's Desk Reference. Yeah, every book about that. Yes. <laughs> every drug is listed in there. There's not one drug that doesn't have a side effect. Right. They're, they're all toxic. And, and you know what's funny, Dr. Joe? You'll hear supplements don't do anything. Mm -hmm. But then you'll say, well, you can't take this supplement if you're taking this drug. Well, if supplements don't do anything, <laughs> <laughs> then why can't you take the drug with that supplement? Exactly right. The supplements uh, influence your physiology, uh, as many drugs do, without, without the side effects. If you're using natural supplements, there's usually little to no side effects. I mean, there are some side effects with herbs and things like that. Most of them positive. Yes. Because that action is a side effect as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Just right. not a negative one. I call it side benefit. Side benefit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, um, you know, the big pharma has taken over everything. And uh, I, it started with the Flexner Report. And it's exactly why you said, because they can't patent a natural substance. They can't make a lot of money off of a natural substance. That's why you don't see the research on natural supplements that you see on other medications, Ozempic and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made there, so they s can spend the money on the research. And a lot of times they don't even do that anymore. They say, oh, it costs all this money to do research, but they have a, a university do the research, and then they split the profits with the university, and they don't end up spending any money on the well, research. I love how it says FDA <laughs> approved, mm -hmm. but they FDA approved something based on the, the material mm -hmm. submitted by the pharmaceutical company. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on what they feel that it's doing, and then they pay the <laughs> FDA to 
to look at it. Yeah, exactly. It's a revolving <laughs> door as to who's yeah. on yeah. the FDA and who's the CEO of oh, the pharmaceutical, oh, company. pharmaceutical company. Does, what's yeah. does FDA stand for? Is that fraud and deception? Oh, I don't know what it stands okay. for. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it makes you wonder sometimes. And it is a revolving door. You'll find that the head of the FDA mm -hmm. or the second in command ends up being a vice president on yeah. some pharmaceutical board, and then they go back. It, it, it's, it's well known. It's not even oh, like yeah. something that they hide. A good example is aspartame. The person in the FDA that said, oh yeah, this is good a good idea to put in our drinks and our food, a few months later became the CEO of Cyril Labs. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there you go. Another good example of COVID <laughs> vaccination. You know yeah. what I mean? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's just it's just an interesting thing that we need to be aware of. Yes, for sure. They're they're not out. They're not, for the most part, looking out for our best interests. Um, that's my belief, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dr. Paul, mm. we want our bodies to function in something called homeostasis. Yes. And and. I just, saw, <laughs> I, I just saw Gary smile, and Gary's smiling because he and I have a personal joke about homeostasis and homeostasis, so, but we're not going to go there. Um, so what, what is homeostasis? Uh, homeostasis is the balance of the body. It's the body's ability to remain in um, harmony. Harmony, and that's, that's important yeah. because too much of a good thing is not a good thing. That's right. And too much of a bad thing is not a good thing. And you want that balance. You do. Yeah, I mean, a, a perfect example just to bring it to light for the viewers is inflammation. Everyone has a, an immediate reaction that inflammation is bad for us. Our body's natural um, response to an insult, an injury. But that's not the case. We know that our body benefits from some level of inflammation at various times. Because if you have an injury, your body sends, has a response system. Right. And that response system is to produce healing. Yeah. And you need a certain amount of inflammation in order for that healing process to happen because it has to go in, clean out the debris, right. the damaged tissue. Increase blood supply. Increase blood supply. supply. You know, there's these little Pac-Man <coughs> that come in and, and right. do that. And then there's a healing process that happens after that. That's in fact, right. there's, there's a big concept uh, about ion transferring and we can talk about that because I know you know a lot about ion and transfers. The, the, you need this electrical potential in order for the healing to happen. And that's why if you like damage your finger, if you hit your finger with a hammer, your, hammer starts, your finger starts to throb <laughs> because you've damaged it and all this process is going there to send the, everything that you need, the nutrients, the blood supply, the oxygen, in order for that to heal. So you go down to like a minus 50, and that creates that throbbing as far as these negative ions being transferred. And then you get red and you swell up a little bit. That's all that process of healing. But if that gets out of control, then you have damage that occurs. Right. So that's why you're talking about that balance. The balance, yeah. So yeah, that's a good, that's, a, that's an example exactly, a hammer to a, a finger or um, a scrape or, inside of our blood vessels, we also have some damage on the inside of blood vessels. And that's the real issue with, with disease, heart disease and other inflammatory diseases, diabetes. So you want that, um, that initial immune response so that the body can then respond to it and activate what is necessary for the repair, rebuilding, regeneration, but then you wanna temper it down. And the issue that happens with most people is that they live in a chronic state of inflammation. So there's a difference between a, a chronic inflammation right. state and, and a transient, and intermittent state of inflammation, so exactly. And the degree to which that intermittent or transient response occurs is also an, an, um, uh, a component of a person's homeostasis. Yeah. So you want that, in, there's a statement that that we hear all the time, I say it a lot, where there's inflammation, there's disease, where there's disease, there's inflammation. Mm -hmm. We would never heal if we didn't have a little bit of inflammation. That's right, yeah. But we have damage when there's chronic inflammation. When it becomes chronic, when it becomes elevated, that's when danger. So let's talk a little bit about- And that's most people. From and, most and, people, And by yeah. the way, let me just put this out there. 
processed food, ultra processed food or processed food in general is one of the most potent and powerful signals to keep people in a state of chronic inflammation. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's not natural. Um, it's, it's human made. Um, it's infused with uh, very toxic chemicals, processed food. And a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar, a lot of salt, a lot of unhealthy chemicals. So we are a saline solution, so we need salt. We're yes, not going to have 100%. this ion transfer and so forth if we don't have, if we don't have salt. We're yeah. basically a battery. We're, yep. We have electric potential, so you need a certain amount of salt. We don't need a lot of sugar. No, we do not. And we don't need a lot of preservatives. No, no we do not. A lot of chemicals. No. And that's, a l that's what happens with processed food. Correct. It happens from the time they grow it. Yeah. And they're also growing food that doesn't have the nutrients in it. Yeah, th real important point here that I think is important for the audience. The reason why we don't need added sugar and we don't need excessive amounts of sugar is the body has the ability innately, we call it intrinsic, formation, gener gen you know, the ability to generate it on its own, sugar from just about any nutrient. And so our body is very, very well adapted to create its own sugar. It doesn't need any from the outside. Even if you're eating a piece of steak, exactly. that's going to get converted in your body to glucose. Right. The process called a fancy science, mm -hmm. science word called gluconeogenesis. It's the formation of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. Our body's very well adapted just through um, our, our ancestry and our, and our genetic makeup. We have the capa capacity to do that, yeah. So if you're eating a lot of protein, your body's gonna make the glucose that you need. A lot of need, fat. A lot of fat. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you're now eating processed food loaded with sugar, you're now loading, overloading your body. You, you have maxed out your energy stores of, of certain um, energy stores, I should say, <coughs> of you know protein and and carbohydrate, and so what the uh, the body ends up doing is storing more more fat because we have almost a infinite so amount. So we all fight that battle. I mean, it's easy to it's easy to store fat. Your body does it sometimes as a pr protective measure. Yes, why, it will. Why does it do that? Well, because it's um, it's interested in survival. And so the body wants to survive, and having adequate energy stores allows for that to happen. So your body's going to take some of the things that it sees as harmful to you and store it in those fat cells. Is that what happens? Um, yes, it, it, it will do that. I mean, th like I said, the, the body's looking out for its self-preservation. And so if there is a, um, a trigger or there is a, a situation, an environment that is imposing on its energy stores, it's gonna create as much as it can to help it survive. The, the other component to this is that when it does store fat, um, it also attracts other harmful toxins with it. Um, toxins, for example, PCBs and other glycosphates and, and things that are harmful, microplastics, uh, nanoplastics, things that are harmful to the body are very fat loving. Mm -hmm. And so the body will create that additional fat storage when you have exposure to those harmful substances. See, it's interesting, and I, th I don't think people realize this, our body loves fat, <laughs> you know, yeah. but fat doesn't make us fat. No, it does not, no. And if you wanna deliver a supplement or a medication, you put it in a fat and your body takes it in. Right. But people think fat makes you fat. Yeah. It isn't fat that makes you fat, but this excess glucose does. It's the, it's the excess sugar. It's the yeah. excess, yep. simple sugars, processed foods, because that is the trigger for the release of insulin. And insulin is the hormone that we call the chaperone for sugar gaining access into cells. And so when we increase the amount of sugar processed foods that we have in our body, insulin goes up, that's the chaperone, and that facilitates, augments, and accelerates the storage of sugar in our, um, in our cells, but we have a limited supply of what we can store with carbohydrate. We've only got about 2,000 calories. That's about enough calories to last us one day of carbohydrates total on our body. Once we exceed that, which happens very, very easily, 
in our modern culture of super highly processed food, what's the alternative? Well, it's only one alternative. You don't have the carbohydrate stores to store it, so you then transition into store creating more fat. And you can counteract that a little bit by your activity. Activity can help to some degree, but we're a very sedentary culture. So um, what ends up happening is people fall into this uh, misinformed concept that um, moving more is the solution, and it just simply isn't. Um, uh, the, the two most diametrically opposing forces for a, a, an organism to survive is telling it to move more and consume less. And so that, that concept of just move more and eat less and that'll solve all your woes um, is nothing further from the truth. That's, that's the number one, um, I would say, recipe for extinction of an <laughs> organism. <Recipe> for <laughs> extinction. So, so when, you, when you go to the grocery store and you're shopping everything that's in the center, you're basically shopping processed foods. You're shopping processed foods, you're shopping um, primary insulin triggers to, re to be released, then which will then lead to fat storage. And then when you trigger that insulin, you're also triggering, triggering cortisol. You're, you're triggering cortisol and other stress hormones, that's right. Yeah. And that's gonna create what, Dr. Fiber? Oh, that creates a ton of problems because eventually, when cortisol goes up and stays up for a long time, the body eventually can't produce it. You can end up with adrenal problems, you can end up with kidney problems, liver problems. The body and what Dr. Paul is talking about, about inflammation, we put ourselves in a chronic state of inflammation by doing all this. And we get tired, we get fatigued. One of the reasons why people like junk food, excess sugar, chemicals, because they get it high. Same way from Drugs. heroin and cocaine. Exactly right. In fact, we know that sugar stimulates mm -hmm. the same part of the brain. So why do they put this in there? Because they want you to eat and eat and eat and eat this stuff because they make a lot of money buying it as your health goes down lower and lower. It's interesting in this world, if you follow the money, you... Well, yeah, <laughs> it's always been that way. Yeah. You know, we're here with three medical people that are advising you on health. You know, if you're healthy, you're happy, right? That, that's yeah. a statement I make all the time. And this protocol that we're going to be talking about in the next, uh, we're already at the first break, so at this next hour and a half, and it's going to be a two-part show, is really going to be a step-by-step -step procedure and how to turn all this, your body, into homeostasis. That's what the goal is, to be Absolutely. in balance. We're at our first break. We'll be back with Dr. Joe, Dr. Gary, and Dr. Paul. Dr. Ed Show. I'm Dr. Edmund Stolkowski, and we're here with three remarkable medical people. Dr. Joe Pereka, <laughs> Dr. Gary Fiber, and Dr. Paul Sierra. Been in the medical field, you know, honestly, let's, let's do an actual count here. 38. 38. 45. 45. 38. Oh, geez. So <laughs> we're, we're talking 140 years here. And if you add me, we're talking about 240 <laughs> years. So, so th this, this is an incredible panel that we have over here. And their focus has always been on health and wellness, as has mine been. Chiropractors, to me, are extremely important. I've been I remember, you guys are going to laugh, Dr. Joe and doc Dr. Gary are both chiropractors. I remember my dad going to a chiropractor when something would happen. And I would laugh at him, like, "What are you going to these wax, <laughs> these crack, these wacko people for? You know, they're they're not doctors, but you guys are incredible." And he would go in there, unable to lift a shoulder or pain going down his leg, and walk out. And I would hear like noises back there because you know, I'd always go with him, and I didn't like that sound. But he would be fine afterwards. So how important is being in alignment? And what's that called? What's your term when you're not in alignment? 
Well, we, I mean, either, we, you, either you can talk. We call it subluxation. Uh, I, um, usually I call it uh, joint dysfunction <laughs> because it's, uh, it's not really that your, your back goes out because nothing can go out. Your, your joints are like a train on tracks. But what happens is those joints have a, a, a motion uh, in different planes like flexion, extension, lateral bending, rotation. And those joints can get stuck in any plane of motion. Maybe you get stuck in rotation to the left. Well, when that joint's locked, the adjustment, what it does is unlocks the joint so then it has normal range of motion in all the planes again. Is that a result of inflammation, over inflammation? Well, that can, that can result in inflammation, it c and, and it could be a result of inflammation. Uh, what will happen is if, if that joint stays locked for too long, you'll have tissue damage and then you will have inflammation. Uh, and another thing is there's, there's special nerves in there called proprioceptors. And these proprioceptors, they're innervated by the nerve supply by these large 1A diameter fibers. So if you're locked, those joints aren't moving the way they should, then what happens is you don't get stimulation of those large 1A fibers, and then a lot of things happen. Inflammation sets in quicker, pain goes way th through the roof because those 1A fibers, they synapse or they connect to the C fibers that carry pain. So you remember the old... Um, in the old timers, they, they had the rocking chair. The reason they had it was to stimulate those joint receptors so it would stimulate the 1A fibers and it would inhibit the C fibers to dampen the pain response. You know, now we have all these fancy medications that do it, but... And pain is your body's warning that something's wrong. Yes, absolutely. Pain is a, is a warning signal. It's just like, you know, if you're driving down the road and your oil light comes on in your car, that's a warning. Well, what you have to do is you have to take it to the, um, to, the, to the auto mechanic or wherever and you have to add oil, you don't smash the light out, you know? So that's, when, you, when we take things that cover up pain but don't address the underlying cause of the problem. So the underlying cause of the problem is the joint is locked, right? So and, we have to unlock it. And that's what this conversation mm -hmm. is here today. It's about mm -hmm. finding the underlying cause of the problem. So exactly. you want to go to the root cause yes. in order to eliminate the problem. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I always made this analogy that we're nothing but a hose, mm -hmm. a tube. That's mm -hmm. all we are. We're a tube, of, you call them fibers, we're a tube of nerves, blood vessels, electrical. I mean, yes. that fascia that's all on there, covering our organs and everything mm -hmm. is, is really just a web of, of, of yeah. fibers that carry electricity is what it really is. Sure. Yeah. What happens if you c compress a hose, Dr. Fiber? The well, water doesn't <coughs> move, right? Right, it doesn't. And the other thing that's interesting and people don't remember, most people think you go to a chiropractor because you got a neck or a back problem. And that's or, why most people do that. It's like the same right. thing in my profession. Most people right. come when they got a problem. <clears throat> the thing is, though, they have to understand that the nervous system starts in the brain, runs down through the spinal cord, which is runs through the center of the openings of all those vertebrae. Every nerve that comes off that spinal column goes to some part of your body, whether it's controlling digestion, whether it's controlling breathing, heart rate, anything like that. How every organ functions? Electrically. No, is this, does so it that is how every organ? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So when I, I mean, I've seen people over the years, you know, definition of a miracle, right? Anything medical science can't explain. So when people have come to me for digestive problems and you find a related area in the spine, because there are, the spine, obviously the nerves come off at different levels. So whether it's a breathing problem, not that we can fix them all, but the point is, and like Dr. Joe was talking about, if there's an imbalance, and I liken a, a spinal column to a chain on a bike, if that chain, if all those links move properly, it goes over the sprocket and it just keeps on going. If you twist that, bend that, they get a little out of sync or whatever else, sometimes it'll just click or make noise, but if it gets bad enough, it'll jump off the sprocket. So if you want, you're gonna get scar tissue on chronic problems. Traumas are the worst things because as you, if you fixate these vertebrae, they get stuck, you can form scar tissue. The body will adapt to that. The head always wants to be over center. So you see these poor people walking around all stipped over whatever else, but they're trying to keep their head over center so their balance isn't all messed up. But it relates to really how the body heals, okay? And that's really the difference. So if you eat crappy food, it's going to cause a neurological response in the intestine, which is gonna go everywhere. So I've seen people that literally, see, it, chiropractic doesn't always have to be, well, your neck's 
out of position. It can't be out of place because otherwise you'd need surgery. It, I call it stuck, fixated. Or those of us who are old enough to remember a slinky, if you torque a slinky just a little bit, it's not going to go down the steps right. So all we, we really try to do is, one, make sure that that spinal column is functioning. Neurologically, we test all that stuff. And you were talking about medical school. I mean, we spend, we take just as many classes in diagnosis and physiology and all the other ologies as every other medical profession does. And we take national boards to, and then we take state boards. So we just look at the diagnosis. Yeah, we got to know whether you're having a heart problem and it's related to, let's call the ER or not. Well, it's funny. You know, going to a chiropractor was something that people did, just mm -hmm. like they took supplements, you know, nutrition in order to mm -hmm. be healthy until the term MD. W those MDs, original MDs, were really nothing but pharmaceutical representatives and selling, <laughs> selling <laughs> drugs. And uh, that narrative changed when it was, oh, we got a pill for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always call it Frankenstein medicine, and I know mm -hmm. when I have a physician on here, they get upset with me. <laughs> and and I, I started calling that, I don't know, 30 years ago when I was, you know, lecturing. And then I, the term came to me because they made Frankenstein by suppressing him, cutting it away, or sewing, him, sewing him together. Good point. And that's kind of what I was taught, mm -hmm. you know. And that's not that's necessary. You have a car accident. You have a heart right. attack. No, you, have yeah, a, yeah. you know, there's there's times that is absolutely yeah, necessary. For sure. You know, there's medications that can save your life. Absolutely. But it's not the lifestyle. It's it's your body's actually designed to heal itself, mm -hmm. providing that you give it what it needs right. to do it. Right. And it, it can be remarkable. I'm a living example. Of it. I've talked briefly about this from time to time. Lost half of my small intestine. Half of my organs are taken away. Told to go home and die. I didn't listen to them. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. <laughs> I didn't listen to them. I didn't eat for five years. I quit. I lived on tubes in my neck, liquid liquid diet. You know, all these things. Nothing was working until I figured it out. Thank God I was given the power, brain power, to do that. But I didn't accept what was given to me. But I did feed my body. I learned how to feed the body so that it healed itself. Right. Now, I'm not perfect. I have still issues, but I have a quality of life. And I've certainly, you know, this was 30 years ago this happened to me. Wow. And seriously, I was told to go home and get my that. affairs in order. Uh -huh. so, so I'm using that as an example of how important this stuff is. So. Chiropractic care to me is important. I do. I drive 40 minutes every Wednesday <laughs> and can't wait to go to see Dr. Pereka. Mm -hmm. All right. Our nutrients will not get to where they need to be if we're not aligned properly. Without question. In fact, you know, as I'm listening to these two and, and you as well with your story, I'm reminded that you know, to me. One of the greatest values that chiropractic care provides the body is the enhancing of the nervous system to our muscular system. Our muscular system is what allows us to move and, and function. And that is what holds our primary metabolic tissue. It's our muscle mass, our muscular system. So that neuromuscular connection that chiropractors enhance and optimize inside the human body is paramount to our well-being. Um, and you're right, the ability to deliver the nutrients um, along that pathway. But I'm just reminded of that because it's, it's such a powerful force behind enabling our body to function optimally. So um, it's, it's one of the most um, underappreciated. And you know, your story of, of our, our medical um, establishment and kind of the, the mess that we're in with the um, hyper-focus on medication um, as the cure or the prevention. And that's just um, never been the case in terms of, of human health. It's, um, it's lifestyle that serves that purpose. Well, you know, there's not a day go by that I don't have to write a prescription. And when I write an antibiotic prescription, and it's absolutely necessary times, or I wouldn't right. be writing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I cringe every time I do it because I know the after effects of it, what that antibiotic is going to do to your gut Good. and what it's going to do yeah. to the floor. And I try to yeah. advise my patients, hey, 
you know, take some of this, take some of that, you know, don't take it longer than you have to, don't take it if you don't have to, you know. Right, right. We, I try to, to give that education, but antibiotics are important, but they do a lot of damage. That's right. And you have to counteract that some way, and it takes a little time for your body to bounce back from an antibiotic, you know. So what we put inside of us has its benefits, and then it also has the negative side effects. So if you look at nutrition, mm -hmm. there's something in our that we have that's called methylation, Dr. Paul. And I would like you to explain methylation to, because methylation is an, is really what the cellular function is. You can you can take, like for example, all the vitamin B12, and if you have a particular gene that 40% of the people in the United States have. Um, that B vitamin isn't doing you anything because you're not methylating it. What is methylation? Yeah. Um, I, can I back up just one yeah. more? Because I want to start with the, the gut that where you started because I think it's such an important um, area. Um, because it, it then um, diffuses and, and infuses the rest of our body. Yeah, I think, you know, with the antibiotic overuse that we know that we've um, come into as a culture, um, Re reestablishing the health of the microflora of the gut um, is paramount to how our bodies um, even can begin to absorb nutrients. If we don't have a healthy gut, we are compromising our body's ability to absorb and extract, digest, um, transport these healthy nutrients. And so, you know, as I'm, as I'm reminded, as you said, you know, one of the things that you do on a daily basis is write prescriptions for antibiotics. Um, making sure that people are tending to their gut first and foremost on a regular basis is paramount to them um, being healthy. And so, yeah, we have things that are called, uh, that many of us hear a lot about, um, probiotics, right? So the probiotics are quite common. Probiotics, prebiotics, postbiotics. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So the, the tribiotic, you know, trilogy of all three um, are clearly what we need to be doing in order to help optimize. It's an area of, of high interest of mine because I research it and I've been able to show, and I know we're going to get to this eventually, but this regimen right here of optimizing our nutritional health is the best way that we can begin to remodel Remodel, literally remodel. I have this, you know, the evidence to, to demonstrate and support this. We can remodel our gut uh, by this regimen that we have here. Well, see, and so you are not the same person you were a year ago, right? Exactly, yeah, you, at every level. Your body changes its cells, and every organ from your eyes to your hair to your nails changes at different rates. That's right. Gut Bones, changes, what, yeah. about every three days? Um, the cells of your yeah, gut. yeah. In some cases, certain of the, um, the inhabitants lining. inhabitants of the gut change even more rapidly than that. But um, yeah, somewhere between you know minutes. We're, we're to talking days. about the lining, the, the cells, the lining. And the lining. Yeah. So if you have a something called dysbiosis, so you can mm -hmm. tell us what that is. Uh, dysbiosis, just like um, as as Dr. Joe was talking about, um, uh, you know, nervous system dysfunction. That's dysbiosis of our gut microbiota. Which uh, layman's terms, uh, I'd probably um, hear it as leaky gut. Leaky gut is, is, is one of the yep, forms of dysbiosis, so it's just a, a malfunctioning or a poor functioning of our gut. So of those our cells join system. together and, and form a matrix, and if, and, and if those, that matrix isn't tight, something that can do that would be Antibiotic gluten. for one, <laughs> yeah. Antibiotic gluten for another. Gluten is another, <laughs> right? Lactose for some. And, and you yeah. can. People have a. Uh, well, I'm thinking about it. Have a misconception. You can have a gluten problem, but not have celiac sprue, which is you know a true gluten allergy. Mm -hmm. You can still have effects from gluten and, and not have celiac sprue. People don't realize that. Mm -hmm. But when you when those junctions become less tight, right? These proteins that we need to live by escape. In. Get in there mm -hmm. and go to places they shouldn't be, such as your joints. And mm -hmm. that causes an inflammatory response, response that we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. Which so then causes degenerative process and a disease right. process, and it's this cycle. So you have to correct that gut. Absolutely. Yeah, it's our first line of defense against everything. 
our skin, of course, is, but that entry point of our digestive system is an, is an opportunity, an opportunistic, you know, pathway um, for pathogens, toxins, and so not having the integrity and the health of the gut lining will allow those things to pass through. And some of those that you just described, antibiotic, gluten, certain other um, food substances, alcohol. definitely, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, alcohol, other pathogens that we consume, um, nanoplastics, um, those have an easier barrier of entry into our bloodstream and ultimately into our fat storage. Yeah. And if you don't have, uh, y you know what, I'm, I'm thinking also, as you age, your body tends to not function as well. And I'm not sure, I haven't figured this out yet exactly, whether it's the process of aging or it's the process of lifestyle that causes maybe lower stomach acid. And without stomach acid, you're not digesting any of the proteins that we have, mm -hmm. that we need. And people are taking a lot of these anti-acids because they have GERD. You know, they have acid mm -hmm. reflux. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then they'll say, well, let's shut the system down. Well, if you shut your acid in your stomach, you do a lot of things. The first thing you do is, you, that's your first line of defense mm -hmm. of anything that you swallow. People don't realize airborne products of pathogens that may cause us to become sick, mm -hmm. we swallow them as well as breathe them in. That's right. Oh yeah. And if we don't have stomach acid, mm -hmm. they can grab a hold of us. If we have stomach acid, they die. But we're shutting our stomach acid down, these protein, what am I saying? Inhibitors. Uh, inhibitors. Yeah. Proton pump Pro inhibitors. Proton pump inhibitors, inhibitors mm -hmm. are shutting that process down. H2 inhibitors. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're not, we're not, we don't have the mm -hmm. stomach acid to digest the proteins that we're going to talk about. Yeah, Dr. Ed, you mentioned, you know, whether it was aging or lifestyle. It's lifestyle. It's lifestyle. Nearly 99% of I, I, the time. That's, <laughs> my, that's my inclination. It's more of, yeah. a, it's more of a lifestyle For than, sure. than, than just you know, these age-related disease stuff. The f yep. You know, uh, I, I, see a, I see a lot of, uh, of, of vibrant 80-year-olds, you know, who are ha ha have a good lifestyle and they're, they're 80 and vibrant playing golf every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As opposed to sitting in the rocking chair at 40. Right. So, so uh, I, I, I think you're right. I think it is more of a lifestyle. It's inhibiting the the what I call the insults, mm -hmm. you know, poor diet, mm -hmm. smoking, inactivity, inactivity, mm -hmm. alcohol, uh, drugs, processed uh, food, yeah, yeah processed yes. food, all this stuff, keeping those on, you know, down and and letting your body function and supporting right. it. I think that's really the key f for all of it. I mean, look at Jack Lalanne. I mean, he he was vibrant up to 98 years old. That you know, yeah. it was his lifestyle. And some of it's mindset too. Oh yeah, oh, you know, stress yeah. is a big problem. Yeah. stress causes leaky gut. Absolutely. <laughs> so you know, there's a big connection. Because you get that insulin and cortisol uh, yes, imbalance and, and, and so forth. Yes, and the that's your second brain. So you know, the enteric nervous system is your second brain. Your first brain's up here in your skull, then your second brain. They're connected. And third brain is the microbiome, the bugs we were talking about. Well, you know, your gut is at least 70% of your immune system. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it is, yeah. Absolutely 70% of your yep. immune system. And everything communicates. Your gut communicates with your thyroid. Mm -hmm. We've got to talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, we need like a nine hour show. <laughs> <laughs> we passed over methylation, of well, course. No, we're going to go back to that. I was okay. just, that's <laughs> on my mind. I, I, <laughs> this methylation <laughs> thing is so important, and people yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. 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 It's but a necessary cellular pathway that has to occur inside the body. And if it doesn't, you're, you're, you're in a bad in, state. You're right? in a heap and of And you're never going to get in a good state. That's right. So, uh, but, but th this communication of gut to brain, gut to heart, mm -hmm. gut to thyroid, yeah. it's all there. Mm -hmm. It's all documented. This isn't like some myth. Right. Again, chiropractic allows for that pathway to occur. We, we need direct communication of our gut to all of those places. I think people have a misconception that it's just there to help us digest food. It plays a critical role, as you described, in our nervous system health, our immune health. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's got so, People so think that we need to be sterile. And when this COVID thing came about, and Dr. Falsi and, 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 <laughs> and, and all that. those organizations yeah. that, that, that were promoting 
you know, stupid mask wearing right. and, and vaccinations and don't touch your grandma and, and <laughs> hibernate mm -hmm. in your house. All mm -hmm. of that stuff was the worst thing that you could have done. Absolutely. <laughs> and and yet they educationally did that. for young for the young kids yeah it was yeah, it, a disaster it, 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 and they they still denying it but that that's a fact and we cannot be sterile if you're sterile you're dead mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah, right. yeah so like we were talking about everything comes back full circle right <laughs> if you remain in a sterile environment you never allow your body to have that healthy level of immune response of healthy inflammation and the body's ability to undergo re reduction oxidation um, pathways. How many cells mm -hmm. in the body, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Trillions and that. trillions. trillions. Yeah. 50, yeah. 70, 300 trillion. trillion. Yet there's <laughs> more bugs in your body than cells. Absolutely. Right. Oh, Ten for times sure. more. Yeah. Ten yeah. times more bugs. Yeah. And b but according to all those certain people, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the we want to be sterile. No, yeah. no, no, those bugs serve a really important role. Yeah. I mean, life-saving and a hundred times more genes in our bugs than we have in our body cells <laughs> and but it's at hemostasis you you get sick if the pathogens did I say hemostasis? Yeah, I did it I did it <laughs> <laughs> homeostasis I was holding back yeah because <laughs> I looked at you and it what <laughs> popped in my head uh, uh, that homeostasis that balance that's that's what we need yes harmony that's, that's hard mm -hmm. to come by so I'm going to talk about the methylation and why it's so important. What is methylation? Why is it important? Right now? Yeah, right oh. now. Well, I'm going to have the others jump in here too, but it's, yeah. a, it's a cellular metabolic pathway that um, is required in the body in order for the cells to optimize their function, methylation. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, we have uh, different, uh, you know, again, I don't want to get too mm -hmm. um, technical, but we have different... Uh, components of molecules inside of our body. We have methyl groups, we have um, carboxyl groups, hydroxyl groups. <laughs> we have lots of different um, components of these um, molecules inside of our body, uh, some of which are amino acids. So when we undergo methylation, um, it is a required step in order for the cell to optimize its function, is the way that I like to refer to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So if you have that particular gene, an MTHFR gene, the MTHFR, you cannot yeah. methylate. That's right. So no. you're, you're you could take all the B12 you want, or all the <laughs> the folic acid. Right. Well, nothing's going to happen. Where it becomes dangerous, of course, and again, I'll defer to the other um, two here as well. Mm -hmm. um, you have an excessive buildup of certain of these. So, for example, there are um, synthetically derived uh, vitamins and. And components. All folic acid is cement. exactly yeah. folic yeah. acid, uh, cyanocobalamin, which mm -hmm. is of cheap course form of, of B12. B12. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when we consume those in, in certain products, um, you run the risk because you don't have the ability to methylate, mm -hmm. um, and and that could be dangerous for certain people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, methylation is a required cellular process that we need to occur in our body to optimize mm -hmm. again. The, our cellular health to get into and our metabolic mm -hmm. health to, to get in that hemo slash homeostasis <laughs> process. <laughs> well, you <laughs> wouldn't have hemostasis if you didn't. <laughs> you have you're absolutely right. <laughs> Methylation is very important for repairing the DNA. Absolutely. So if you if if you don't you know you've heard the term epigenetics. So epigenetics is more important than genetics. Genetics is what you're born with. You know that's it determines your height, your hair color, your eye color. But epigenetics, you can change that through your life with your environment, your lifestyle, and your diet. So if you don't have the right methylation going on to repair these defects in the DNA that occur daily, then you can end up with bigger problems. So I, I look at the term epigenetics mm -hmm. as this. You have a lock and you have a key. Mm -hmm. So you can have a propensity to have, let's say, develop cancer. I'm just throwing mm -hmm. that out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't insert that key mm -hmm. into that lock and then turn it, mm -hmm. that cancer is not going to show itself. That I think that's a simple way to explain epigenetics. Yeah. Would you would you agree yes. with me on that? Yeah. You, yep. You've, you've uh, got to you've got to be doing something right. to unlock it. 
But what right. drives the key into the lock are what you are doing. What you're your doing. lifestyle <laughs> and your nutrition. Your, your lifestyle, exactly. If I can, uh, I have an, another analogy too that's similar, but if you have a recipe book, okay, and every page has a recipe on it, but when there's two pages stuck together, so you no longer have that recipe. So methylation, what it does is it unsticks those pages so you have the recipe again, yeah. you can see the recipe. Gentlemen, mm. we're at the end of part one. This is part one of a two-part show <laughs> that's probably gonna continue because you never get this information out. You know, there's just too much here. <laughs> we're gonna do it over time. But this is part one of a two-part show. We have, <laughs> Dr. What are you making me laugh for? <laughs> Dr. Pereka, Dr. Fiber, and Dr. Arciero. We're gonna do the second part where we're gonna focus on what protein is, what amino acids are, and what this program is in a step-by-step -step basis. So stay tuned for part two. Remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet. When you're happy, you're healthy as well. And health will make you happy. You could have all the money in the world, and if you're not healthy, you can't be happy. Remember, you can hear me live every Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on AM 1250 The Answer, 92.5. It's on Alexa, it's on Google Home, it's on <laughs> Rumble. Rumble, it's on <laughs> iTunes. It's, hey, we're everywhere. Right. <laughs> I think I have a, so many view, uh, listeners in Canada anymore because of Rumble. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> but uh, we're getting some good information out there, and we hope it's helping you. We'll be back for part two on The Dr. Ed Show. <laughs>